Hi there, and welcome to this little film about how to make perfect charcoal first time every single time. This thing here is uh, my charcoal retort, my charcoal making machine basically. It's made out of a couple of old gas bottles. Uh, one is this big size, as you can see here, and there's a slightly smaller one inside it. We did a lot of trial and error over different designs and how to do this and this is the final design that we've come up with and this seems to work first time every single time so this is the way that I'm now recommending you may have seen some of my earlier videos with test versions that had various degrees of success at actually turning the wood that I was using into charcoal but this works first time every time and takes just about two hours to go from lighting it to having a barrel full of perfect charcoal or biochar which you can then use in charcoal gasifiers to run engines or you can use in gardening um, to enrich your soil things like that so I'm going to show you basically what this is all about as I say it's a barrel inside a barrel so Basically it's made out of a couple of old gas bottles that uh, we found in the scrapyard. This big one has got a slightly smaller one inside it. Now the smaller one goes from about here only down to about here. And it's held inside by little standoffs from the side of the from the side of the big barrel. So it's actually held in the middle and it's all welded together. Then at the bottom here. This is where you make the fire. This is this is where you light it in the bottom here. And the bottom of the barrel, the bottom of its outer barrel, has got a fire grate in it. So there's holes cut in the bottom. I slit it with an angle grinder in the bottom. That's why it stood on a couple of bricks so air could get underneath it. I slit it in the bottom there so air could come up through and that draws and it's almost like a jet engine coming out of here. You'll, you'll get flames when it's running at its full potential. You'll get flames licking a foot, maybe two feet out the top of this chimney here. Uh, the chimney bit is an old fire extinguisher. Top and bottom cut off to make it a cylinder. So that's an old fire extinguisher, that bit. So, I'll take the top off and show you how it works. Right, just down inside the main barrel, as I say, is the secondary barrel. And the secondary barrel is the one that has the charcoal in, that has the wood in that you're going to turn into charcoal. Um, that doesn't catch fire. That just kind of bakes using the heat from below. That kind of bakes inside the inner barrel. The flames lick up between the outer barrel and the inner barrel. So there's charcoal inside the inner barrel bakes into charcoal from being just ordinary wood cut up. Now the wood that I tend to use is uh, bits of old pallets, bits of old broken pallets that uh, that we get. I just chop it up on a saw and uh, into bits about the size of your hand and then I throw them down into the inner barrel here. Uh, so I'll now uh, show you a little bit more about the inside and how it works. Right, I brought you a bit closer now so you can see inside this uh, double barrel setup and you can see the gap down the side of the two barrels here. This is where the flames come up and where the heat and smoke comes up and what's inside this inner barrel is the wood that cooks into charcoal. As you can see it's empty at the moment but it's another fairly big uh, gas cylinder it started life as and the top is the top of another gas cylinder just cut away now the top has to be off another one because it has to be slightly bigger than the hole in the inner barrel so you've got a bit of overlap to kind of seal it and the top itself is quite heavy because it's steel so we don't lock that down in any way we just leave it like that 
Now there's the original hole here for the uh, what was the valve when it was a gas bottle. We leave that hole there because as the wood cooks and becomes charcoal in this inner barrel it gives off gas. Uh, wood gas which theoretically you can burn and some people do have wood gasifiers but the problem is the first gas that it gives off as it's turning from wood to charcoal is very dirty it contains a lot of tar and stuff like that uh, which would gum up an engine if you were using the the uh, the wood to run an engine in a wood gasifier so they have to have lots of scrubbers and uh, and filters and things like that to get the uh, to get the tar and stuff out of the gas a charcoal gasifier is much simpler because you burn off that dirty gas. Okay, you are losing some of the um, some of the power from the wood because you're just burning it off in in the form of the gas. But the charcoal doesn't take anywhere near as much cleaning. You don't have to filter it as much if you have a charcoal gasifier to run an engine as you do if you have a wood gasifier and that's basically why I made a charcoal gasifier because I want to use it to run an engine so we take the lid off the inner barrel and we would fill that up with bits of wood put the lid back on and then we take the top of the barrel and we put that back in place so imagine we've now filled it up with wood that inner barrel the top is back in place and that just basically acts as a chimney to give more draw so the uh, the fire that we're going to build in the bottom burns better so in the bottom of here we now make a fire just bits of scrunched up newspaper in the bottom to light it then bits of wood on the top of that in here like that close the door and it will start firing away the flames will lick up between the two barrels here heat up the inner barrel and then that will start driving off the first of the wood gas from the contents of the inner barrel that's the dirty wood gas that we don't want and once it's got going and things got up to temperature that dirty wood gas will ignite now this is why we didn't fix the top of the inner barrel on because some of that gas will come out of that hole in the middle where the valve used to be and if there's more than can get out of that hole it will just lift the whole thing up a bit the whole the whole of that lid up a bit and some will burn off from around the sides but it really doesn't matter as long as that bit burns off and when that is burning off when you've got it up to that temperature and the wood gas that's been produced starts to burn at that point it should be running almost smoke free if not totally smoke free it does smoke a bit when you start it up but once you've got it up to temperature and it started turning that wood into charcoal and driving off that gas then it should burn totally totally clean and also there'll be flames licking out the top of here if you wanted if you wanted to make a cup of tea or make food you could put a pot stand on the top of here and as you'll see when it's lit if you put a pot stand on there you have plenty of heat to like boil a kettle or whatever you want to do so we'll fill the thing up now and uh, we'll light it and then you'll be able to see uh, what happens so here's the wood we use to go in the inner barrel as you can see it's just bits of old pallet that have been chopped up you want hardwood really to make this charcoal, pallets sometimes are hardwood, sometimes are softwood, but it really doesn't matter too much, but I just use what I've got, you know, you don't go out buying wood for this, the idea is to use something that is otherwise rubbish. So this is what we're going to do, and we're just going to put this now 
into the inner barrel. I've cut it small enough that you can just kind of throw it in, it'll sort itself out. As you get towards the top you do want to pack it more. The idea is you want as little space in this inner barrel as possible, as little air space as possible. Pack the wood nice and tightly. You just want enough space for the gas to be able to get round it and find its way out, but not a lot of air in there. Because you want to be burning basically cooking this wood rather than burning this wood and you want to be cooking it in an airless or oxygen free environment. about half full at that. Get some more wood. More wood. It doesn't matter if it's got nails in it. Basically, if you've got nails in your wood, you can take them out, but it's far easier to take them out once it's turned to charcoal because you're going to need to break it up then anyway. And it's far easier to get the nails out once it's charcoal than it is to pull them out of a bit of hard wood. And interestingly, the longer a nail has been in a piece of wood, so they tell me the harder it is to get out. That's why when you come to take apart an old shed or something like that, or any two pieces of wood that have been nailed together for a long time, it's really, really difficult to get the nails out. Alright, that's almost full now. I've got a few more bits to go in here. And as I said, when you get to the top, you want to kind of arrange it and pack it in, shake it down a bit if you can, because you want to have this as full as possible. The more, the more wood you get in here at a time, the more charcoal you make at a time, so it's in your interest to fill it up. And then once we've got it full, we put the lid back on. That just rests on the top there. Then the top back on the whole thing, the chimney back on, if you want to call it that. And this doesn't quite fit properly. You might be able to see there's a little bit of a gap round there because the bottom of the barrel's gone a bit oval shaped. Um, when we cut it, it kind of relaxed it a bit when we cut the top off it and boing and relaxed out a bit and the top's still round. It not fitting quite right though is sometimes a good thing because being able to see a little bit in here um, helps you see when the gas is ignited, the wood gas being driven off is ignited. But you will hear it anyway, you will sort, sort of hear it start to roar at the top when that happens. Right, the only thing we now need to do is put some fuel in the bottom of here. And basically you can put in here anything that burns. I use more wood. Um, you can use rotten wood, you can use clippings from the garden. Any old rubbish that will burn you can put in the bottom of the, uh, of the burner here. Light it and that's what provides the heat, provides the fuel and the heat 
to cook what is in the inner barrel. It's basically just a cookery lesson that we're talking about. You, you're trying to cook the wood that's inside that inner barrel, not burn it. So you're burning what's in the bottom, cooking what's in the top. Provided you understand that, you'll have no problems making a charcoal. It will go down a bit. That inner barrel that we've filled right to the top, you will end up with something like two thirds to three quarters of that barrel full of charcoal at the end of it. It will, it will go down a bit in the process of turning it from wood to charcoal. But you'll still get quite a lot of charcoal out. Okay, so I will now carry on, um, build the fire in the bottom, then we'll light the thing and uh, we'll show you from there uh, what happens from lighting it to the process finishing in this size burner of this design I found with a couple of runs that I've done it already it takes about two hours we're starting to lose the light a little bit now which is kind of a good thing because hopefully I'll be able to show you it running um, in in the dusk and you'll be able to see better the flames and things because it's quite spectacular and quite a nice thing to look at you know you you think oh I've got to stand with it two hours you'll have no problem standing with it two hours it's a bit like a fish tank you know you can stand in front of it for hours looking at the fish well you couldn't stand in front of this for hours watching the flames so it's quite a, quite a good thing to sort of stand around in a on a like an autumnal evening like it is now and uh, in two hours time you'll have some brilliant charcoal okay last time I showed you how the charcoal retort was made. This is a device that turns wood into charcoal and if you remember we filled up the inner drum with bits of cut up wood and now all we're going to do is put a fire under that in the bottom of the outer drum in here so it burns under the inner drum and should turn that inner drum that is full of wood into charcoal in around about two hours so we now have to make a fire and it couldn't be easier remember there are slots in the bottom of here to make like a fire grate so air will draw up through it and it'll should get going quite quickly and uh, it'll give a really good flame so we take some bits of newspaper, if I can part the sheets, just screw them up. Now it's important you don't put these in too tight, otherwise you'll block the airflow from the slots in the bottom of the barrel. So we we'll just screw up bits of old newspaper. in the bottom. As I say, you don't screw them up too tight, you don't want to block the air flow that's coming up underneath. And then we've got some more bits of chopped up wood. As you can see they're just roughly chopped up on a circular saw. Doesn't pass a few nails in. Go on top of the paper. You want small bits of this initially. I can put bigger bits on later when it's got going. So there's some bits of wood, then we take a gas lighter and just light it. Now 
Now air at the moment is coming in the front here, but when I close this door, it'll make it draw the air from underneath and should start to roar. And I can hear it just beginning to roar now. And that'll take a few minutes to get going. Very quickly you'll see a bit of smoke appearing out the top. It will smoke a bit until it's up to temperature and until we start burning off wood gas, the dirty wood gas, that is the first of the wood gas that is produced from what's in the inner barrel. Once that starts burning off, it should burn pretty much clean. Okay, we've been going about an hour now and it's still not ignited the wood gas at the top of the burner yet, but it's getting close. We've got a really good fire going now in the bottom. As you'll be able to see in there, it was around the crack of the door and I'm sure you can hear it as well. And if we look down inside here, you can just see the orange flames coming up between the two bottles and that's what's cooking the contents of the inner bottle and when the gas is thick enough that is seeping out under the lid of that inner bottle it'll meet those orange flames and should ignite you might not ignite with the door closed because there might not be enough air in there to do it you maybe need some extra air, air holes around the top of the bottle here as like an afterburner air inlet but what I normally do is just open the bottom door about halfway and that should ignite it. But as you can see, the smoke is coming out at speed now. And that's how the flames will be when that smoke finally ignites. Most of that smoke is coming I believe now out of the inner bottle, that is wood gas, it's a kind of grey colour, it's not white, it's a greyy browny colour and that is the, uh, the wood gas coming out of there. So let it go for another few minutes and it should ignite, in fact I'll try it, I'll just get my long stick here, yes, I poke the door open, if I open the door it might suddenly go woof at the top and ignite, yes there it goes and you can hear it now at the top and you can see it and you see the smoke has almost gone out of the top of there and you'll see the odd flame starting to shoot out of there now if I close the bottom door it'll probably stop doing it yeah it's gone out again you see it's gone out again at the top now. And when I open the bottom door again, that'll probably reignite. Yep. There it goes. Okay, it's just a few minutes later now. I've put a little bit more wood on the fire and you can now see the flames really licking out the top there, just like a jet with its afterburners on. That's what you're aiming for. You can't hear it much probably at the minute. That's because the camera's stood quite a long way back and I've got the telephoto lens on because uh, to stand close to it now it's quite warm as you can imagine so that's basically it we've been going for about an hour and a quarter now since I uh, since I lit it so going to go for about another three quarters of an hour keep the fire stoked up in the bottom keep it stoked up quite high and after about three quarters of an hour or so then I'll give it one final stoke up and then I'll leave it to it it'll probably still be burning wood gas off from the top but after about another three quarters of an hour when we're going two hours I'll give it another final stoke up which will probably keep it going another 10 minutes 20 minutes or so uh, but I'll leave it to it then and uh, it'll eventually go out on its own and then tomorrow morning we'll come and have a look at it and see what we've got inside that inner barrel right I better get stoking up again
as you can see, I had it running yesterday. I'll take that top off. I'll stick that just down there a minute. And as you can see inside, we have got really good quality charcoal. Really good quality stuff. I mean, you'll see there, if I can get the camera to focus on it, that it is perfectly black. There's no browns left in that at all. It is absolutely perfect quality. That charcoal in there. So, but that proved that it does make charcoal. So we're going to have a second go later on just to prove it wasn't a one-time only fluke. Okay, I'll get back to you.